So I received a comment a couple of days back telling me to stop doing partial reps because they're totally useless because some guy on TikTok said so. Now, <laughs> let's break this down a bit. First of all, do I think partial reps are effective? Absolutely. Do I have any scientific backing for this claim? Well, if any of you know the YouTuber Jeff Nippard, which I assume most of you do if you're into weightlifting at all because he's got some really valuable information and his channel, <clears throat> along with a couple of others, has really built the foundation of my knowledge in terms of weightlifting and nutrition. And recently, he conducted a study, a really well-structured study, to compare short length partials to full range of motion to long length partials. And what he found was that long length partials were actually more effective for hypertrophy than full range of motion and short length partials. Now, does that mean you should never do full range of motion and only do long length partials? <clears throat> no, I think full range of motion is important. And I think a combination of full range of motion and long length partials is the way to go which is the way I pretty much train at the moment. Does that mean you should do that on all exercises all the time? Again, probably not, because on some exercises, it's much more practical than others. For example, on an overhead shoulder press, I'm gonna come up with shoulder examples because that's what I trained yesterday, but an overhead shoulder press, you probably know when you can't hit that last rep, but I also think you should go for the last rep and still get the lo one long length partial in. But I don't think you should continue to just slowly burn out because you see the range of motion from here to here, which is realistically how much you're going to be able to move the dumbbells or barbell or whatever you're using by that point of the movement, isn't really going to give you any contraction on your front delts or side delts, which is what you're looking for, obviously. So in that case, I think you do, another, you do a partial rep to see if you can get another full rep so you go into the rep thinking that you're doing, a, you're going for a full rep, but sometimes it ends up just being a partial rep, and that's where you've hit failure, and that's where you stop. I think that works great for compound movements. However, on a movement like the side lateral raise, I'm only going to do it with one arm because of the door here, but look how long the range of motion is here. So let me do it in my stance. So I lean over and to get full side out activation. Look how long that range of motion is. Right, so that's what I would call a full rep. Anything under that here, that's coming into the territory of partial. But once I've done my last rep where I've got to here, guess what, I can do another two or three reps where I can still get pretty far out. So from here to here, that's a pretty, that's still a significant range of motion and that's still gonna be getting some side delt and rear delt activation, which is obviously what you're looking for. So those are just two little examples of where I think partial reps don't really work as well, but still have their place, and where partial reps can be really effective and can actually help you lead to much more growth. Because ultimately what you're doing when you're adding partial reps to the end of your set is you're preparing your muscles to go beyond the maximum amount of reps that you hit in your last session so the next session you might be closer to achieving that extra rep. And I think this is proven just based on my results in my lifting. I'm, I'm progressively overloading on a consistent basis, which is what obviously you're looking for. And it's ultimately helped me achieve the best results I've seen so far in my lifting journey. I know I'm not the biggest guy out there, whatever. But I've definitely made a lot of muscle in the last few months, especially throughout my bulk. And a big part of that is due to the increased intensity of my training through the use of partial reps, because that ensures that each set I'm bringing to failure or very, very close to failure, which is ultimately gonna send signals to your muscles to tell them, hey, we need to get bigger to handle this load that we have to consistently lift, right? That's, that's ultimately what you're doing with your body. Now, the other component of this comment is that he got this information from a TikTok. Now, I often, it often goes over my head that TikTok even exists because I don't use it. I'm not from the generation that used it. I'm 22, so just slightly after, or well, slightly before my time, no, slightly after my time, right? I, I, I was in my last year of university when TikTok was a thing, or at least when it blew up and really became a thing. Not that I don't watch short form content at all. I do use YouTube shorts every now and again, but the kinds of content I watch on YouTube shorts are usually shorts from things that I've either seen the full podcast or video of, or they're clips from movies that I've either watched or might want to watch, right? Or TV shows. That's pretty much all my shorts contain. 
obviously here and there there's like other random things in there but ultimately nothing that I'm getting an information basis off of I never watch a short and go right this is all the information I need on this topic because it's impossible to articulate the entire context of something in 60 seconds that's why short form content is not the best way to learn this stuff it's great to introduce you to the concept and give you lots of more questions to ask about it but you can't just watch one TikTok and go, okay, that's everything I need to know, cool. Now let me go lecture everyone on YouTube about it. That's not the way the world works, right? You need a bit more information than that. I'm not saying you need to know everything, but at least watch a podcast episode. At least hear two different guys' different opinions who disagree with each other and then see which one you like more, right? And I listen to people who preach against partials and people who preach for partials. And I tend to agree much more with people who preach four partials. The logic just makes more sense to me. Now, if you don't want to do partial reps, that's fine. Train however, however you want, right? Don't let me dictate how you train. Just use any pieces of advice and tips that have worked for me. Inco try and incorporate them in your routines. If they work, they work. Stick to them, great. If they don't work, don't use them, right? That's what this whole thing is about. It's a lot of trial and error, trial and error seeing what works for you and what doesn't, because our bodies are all very different at the end of the day. There are a lot of similarities, but there are also a lot of genetic differences in our bodies, and that's gonna impact how well exercises work for you. For example, let, just, let me just give an example of that that's not related to height or anything. Arm length, arm length is a massive factor. My arms are really long, as you can see. Like, my, my fists are well below my hips, right? So I've got really long arms for my, well, relative to the rest of my body, which is part of the reason my arms look so damn tiny. It's not that I don't have much muscle mass on my biceps, it's because that muscle mass is stretched out over a longer area of bone because of the length of my arm, right? That's the visual side of things, but the practical side of things means I'm not going to be able to bench as heavy as someone who's the same height and weight as me, but with shorter arms, because they're going to be able to generate much more force and have less distance to go in their bench press. If that makes sense. So like when, when you're pressing, obviously you're extending your arm upwards. If your arm is shorter, you have less distance to go upwards than someone who's got an arm, a longer arm, right? So there's lots of practical as well as visual applications to these genetic differences. And that's why you just can't take all the information you receive at face value. And yeah, I really recommend watching more long form content if you really wanna learn about this stuff. Obviously you can use as much of my videos as you want, but I'm not the best resource for this information. This is more just about me documenting what I'm doing. I'll bring in bits of research and information that I've found that have helped me and things like that every now and again. But if you wanna learn a topic, search that topic and find multiple different reliable sources and confer between them. Don't just take everything you hear at face value. Anyway, I weighed in at 87.8 kg, I think, something like that. Either way, it'll be on screen for you right now. So here's my pre-workout physique check with no pump going on whatsoever. This is what my arms are looking like without a pump because of course, we are gonna be training arms today, which are another priority area for me in terms of growth because as I mentioned, I've got quite long arms. Therefore, I've gotta build more muscle on my arms relative to my chest and my back to make them look more proportional. So without further ado, let's go and get some breakfast. So first up I've got some scrambled eggs with an avocado and a baked potato. Then I've got some beef with veggies and a baked potato. Then I've got some bulk Elevate pre-workout powder with some electrolyte powder for my pre-workout meal. So I kicked off the tricep portion of my arm day on the cable machine for some wide grip straight bar tricep push downs. Now you may be able to notice that I am using my straps for this movement, which is the first time I've done this. And I have to say, I definitely felt that they helped to eliminate my forearms for the movement and get more tension on my triceps. So happy that I tried this out. I thought it might be a good idea since they were really helping with my pullovers, which of course is a similar kind of movement, just you're not really bending your elbows so that your lats are engaged, but worked very well for that movement. I completed four sets of pushdowns with 42 and a half kilos on the stack, managing 11 reps in my first set, 10 reps in my second set, and then nine in the final two. And then I moved over to some overhead extensions using the rope attachment. 
with the stack being at 22 and a half kilos for my first two sets where I managed 11 and nine reps respectively. Then for the last set, I dropped the weight down to 20 kilos for nine reps. So three sets in total of those, meaning seven sets in total for my triceps. Then I moved over to use some dumbbells for some alternating dumbbell curls for my biceps, obviously using the straps here once again with the 18 kilo dumbbells. I stuck with these for all three of my sets, managing 11 reps on my first set, 10 reps on my second set, and then nine reps on my final set, which of course were all personal bests of mine. That's the first time I've done three sets in a row with the 18 kilo dumbbells. Now I'm not gonna go and claim that my form was absolutely immaculate and perfect for every rep on this set. As you can see, as I approach the end of the set, I'm progressively swinging more and more, using more and more momentum in those reps but I really don't think this is the end of the world as long as the whole set doesn't look like this. I think it's fine for the last four or five reps of an 11 rep set to use a little bit of momentum as long as there's still some tension on my biceps, which there obviously was. And yeah, if there's tension on the biceps, you're gonna stimulate some kind of hypertrophy. Then I moved over to the benches for some incline dumbbell curls, which is a movement I haven't done in a while, but a movement that I do really like because Unlike the alternating dumbbell curls, this forces you into a strict range of motion and forcing you to maintain a form. So I was using the 12 and a half kilo dumbbells here, managing 12 reps in my first set and then nine reps in my second and final set for a total of five sets on my biceps. Now you may be noticing that this is one less set on both my biceps and my triceps for, compared to my previous arm days. And it's just a bit of an experimental volume to kind of see what is the most effective volume. And when I went to the changing rooms to check out the pump, it was definitely a damn effective workout. As you can see, bicep pump looking good, veins popping out, which is what we love to see. And I just think my physique looks so much better when I have either a shoulder pump or an arm pump because those are the two priority muscle groups that I want to be targeting during my next bulk. So just looking at them, with a pump right now is a bit of a sneak preview for what my physique can look like in the future with some more arm and shoulder growth. Then I finished up the whole session with 30 minutes of cardio on the seated bike as per usual. Then you can go ahead and pause the video here if you want to check out my sets, reps and weights used throughout the lift as well as my cardio miles done if you're interested in that kind of thing. This is using the Strong app which has a link in the description down below if you're interested in using it. Then for my post-workout meal, I've got some chicken breast with veggies and a sweet potato. Then I've got some Greek yogurt with protein powder, creatine, fruit, and nuts. And that concludes another very successful day of this cut. I'll put my calories and macros on screen for you. Pretty much 2,600 calories on the dot, so bang on target, which is what we love to see, of course. Really solid arm workout today. Really enjoyed using the straps on the tricep pushdowns. Thought that was really effective. A bit of a game changer, to be honest. Helped me be stronger in that movement. Helped me push myself more than I've pushed myself before on that movement. And I'm also just loving the fact that I'm using the Strong app now to track my lifts and make sure that I'm progressing in reps or weight every single session. And as you probably know, if you've got experience cutting and bulking, you don't really expect to be progressing anywhere near as much on a cut as you do on a bulk. But the fact that we're still going up in weight week on week is obviously a very good sign that muscle is definitely being, at the very least, maintained, potentially even being built. It is possible to build muscle whilst in a calorie deficit if you've got A, a bit of body fat on your frame and B, that you're training hard enough to stimulate that growth. So it is a possibility. It's not the optimal state for muscle growth. So I'm not expecting to gain as much muscle in a cut as I do in a bulk, obviously, otherwise you would just cut all the time. But still there is the potential to gain more mass as we get leaner, which obviously overall makes you look bigger. I think that's one of the things that is lost on people about cutting. I get loads of comments saying, oh, why are you cutting? You need to build more muscle first, like blah, blah, blah. And look, I get, I get it. I do need to be bulking more. That's for sure. But if you've been following this series from the start, you know, this is more of a reset to set myself up for the next bulk to be 
a longer term bulk to make more progress in that bulk and to do it much more slowly than I did in my last bulk. But also, the leaner you get, the bigger you look because your muscles have more definition. At the moment, there's a thin layer of fat over my arms and shoulders, for example, my legs, right? Most of my fat is stored around my belly and around my glutes. Polite way of saying ass, obviously, but yeah, you get the point. So ultimately, when that thin layer of fat get, shrinks and shrinks and shrinks on my arms and limbs and all those good spots, my muscles are going to look bigger because they're going to have much more definition, and especially in lighting on camera, that makes them pop out a lot more. So we have that to look forward to. Obviously, we're still quite early on in this cut, only, what, two and a half weeks in now, not even that. So still a long way to go. Planning on two months total. We'll see if that's the right kind of time frame. Could be longer, could be shorter. We'll find out, right? I'm not going to stop cutting until I'm as lean as I want to be. And I'm not really going to know how lean that is until I see it in the mirror. Because by the end of my last cut, I knew that I wanted abs. And that was that was the point where I was like, okay, that's enough. Because I've been cutting for a long time before that point, And that was always the goal. And I finally achieved that goal. So I was like, okay, now it's time to bulk. But this time... I mean, I know I'm going to get abs no matter what, but I want to go a little bit beyond that point, get leaner than I was last time. So we'll have to wait and find out how lean I get throughout this cut. And hopefully you're going to stick with me on this journey. Tomorrow, we're training some legs. And yeah, hopefully I'll see you there for it. Cheers.